A dog's life must be pretty good. Just look at what we, the humans, say about them. If you're like a dog with two tails, it means you're happy. If you want to get on with something, you could say, let the dog see the rabbit. And of course, we all know that every dog has its day. But it's not all positive. A mixture of things is known as a dog's dinner. And when you really think about what that really means, you. And if you're going to see a man about a dog, well... Also, it's a dog eat dog world, I've gone to the dogs, I'm chasing my tail, I'm in the dog house, I need the hair of a dog, I'm barking up the wrong tree, I have my tail between my legs. But this could all be a shaggy dog story so I'll let sleeping dogs lie. They also say why keep a dog and bark yourself and that's true, you could read the rule book but there's still life in this old dog so I'm Rob from JTRpodcast.com and I'm going to show you how to play A Dog's Life. This is a game for 2-6 to six players, plays in about 90 minutes, is designed by Christophe Bollinger and is published by Beton Games. Players are dogs exploring the town, begging for food, marking their territory while earning and or finding bones. The first dog to bury three bones in their den is the winner. To set up, take a random dog and all the matching pieces and draw a random den to find your start space. On your dog board, put a hunger counter on the maximum of four and one piddle counter, yes, piddle counter, in one bladder space. Pile all the other bits next to the board ensuring the newspapers are face down and shuffled around so the numbers are secret. Put the dog catcher next to the pound on the space with the black paw. Choose a random start player and you're good to go. The game is played over a number of turns, each with three phases, food, dog stuff and dog catcher. In the food phase, simply move your hunger counter one space to the left unless you are in the shelter. More on the shelter later, but remember the shelter will feed you so you're not going to go hungry while you're in there. If you happen to start your turn on zero food, drop all your bones and newspapers on your current space and go to space one of the shelter. This ends your turn immediately. Next is the dog stuff phase. It's it's actually called that in the rule book. This is where you spend action points to do things. Each dog has a different number of action points as shown on their player board and each of the following actions takes one point each. The first thing is to move one orthogonal space. You can move through but not land on other dogs and the dog catcher. Restaurants, newsstands and delivery addresses count as a space. You enter and exit them through the paws as printed on the board. More on what they're for in a bit. If you ever move onto another dog's piddle counter, you end your movement immediately and sacrifice any remaining action points. If you're on a trash can, you could search it by covering it with a token and flipping a card from your deck. If it shows food, you move your food token up that amount, a bone goes in your dog's mouth, and a sad dog sadly gets nothing. If the last trash counter is placed on the board, there's a big clean, remove all trash cans and piddle counters from the board. You can beg in a restaurant if you're in one by flipping over a card and gaining that much food. Once again, a sad dog gets nothing. You can obtain a newspaper from a stand and it goes in your mouth too. You look at the number on the back of the counter, but keep it hidden on your board. If you're in the location matching the number on your newspaper, you can deliver it by showing the players you're in the right location, shuffling it back into the pile and flipping a card for your reward. To drink from a fountain, simply add a piddle counter to your board if you have room in your bladder. You can mark a lamppost by putting a piddle counter from your board onto the lamppost itself. If you start your turn on a piddle counter belonging to another player, you can replace it with one of your own if you've got some piddle, you know, stored ready to use. You. You can fight a dog in an adjacent street space by having both players flip over a card to see who has the most poor icons. Defeated dogs drop all their bones and newspapers and must move one space away. If the attacker loses, their turn ends immediately and they don't get to move the dog catcher. Nothing happens in a tie, but a dog can attack again for another action point. Another action is to drop a bone or newspaper on your current space or pick one up from your space as long as you have room in your mouth. Finally, you can bury a bone once you're back at your den. After you've finished all your actions, you move the dog catcher. Roll the die and move the dog catcher forward, including turns that many spaces. The way the dog catcher is facing is important here. Dogs can turn around before moving though, the dog catcher can't. It must move the full number of spaces on the die and if it lands on a dog they drop all their bones and newspapers and are sent to the shelter. However, you can't be caught if you're in a restaurant or a newspaper stand so remember to hide. If it lands next to a dog, that dog flips a card to see if they're caught and sent to the shelter or manage to escape. Play continues in clockwise order. If you start your turn on the shelter, flip a card to see if you leave or not. If you don't, move to the second space of the shelter and end your turn immediately. If you start your turn on the second space of the shelter, you flip two cards and if one shows escape, you're free. Otherwise, move to the third space. If you start your turn on the third space, you automatically leave the shelter. If you leave this way or you manage to leave with a card flip, you could take your full turn as normal. On a typical turn, maybe you'll move a few spaces, take a drink, move a bit more, leave your mark on a lamppost, move to a bin, search, find nothing, and then move the dog catcher, hopefully right on top of an opposing dog. The first player to bury three bones in their den is the winner of the game. That's a dog's life, a simple family-friendly action point allowance pick up and deliver game. Please like this video if you found it useful, share it to let others know about it, and subscribe to the channel for more how to play videos as well as other board game related content. You can find me on Twitter at JTR Podcast, you can find my blog at 
and podcast at jtrpodcast.com. I've been Rob, aka Just the Rogue, and until next time, keep on barking. <laughs>